So today I'm going to talk about the gallbladder and exactly what is a gallbladder attack. Let's start from the beginning and just talk about the purpose of the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a sac that hangs underneath your right rib cage, and the purpose of the gallbladder is to store and concentrate bile, bile salts, okay? Bile salts are detergents. They basically help you break down fats, and they help in the extraction of essential fatty acids, like omega-3 fatty acids, which we need to build body tissue, especially your brain, DHA, EPA, they're anti-inflammatory, as well as fat-soluble vitamins. So when you eat food, you have water-soluble vitamins and you have fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K1, K2. Those need to be extracted from the food. So if you don't have bile, they don't get extracted. So bile helps to pull those out and then you also have help from the pancreas. The pancreas releases an enzyme called lipase that also helps in breaking down this fat to the smallest particles so you, you can absorb it. So what happens with a gallbladder attack, usually you have a stone that gets stuck in this little tube because the liver actually makes the bile and it comes down through these tubes and it's supposed to be stored in this little sac right here. So if you get a stone stuck either in the liver, you can have a liver stone or somewhere down here or right at the opening, the back pressure is gonna cause a lot of pain. So the symptom would be stomach pain, severe cramping in your stomach, pain underneath the right rib cage, could wrap around the back. You could feel nauseous, like you're gonna vomit, right shoulder pain, why? Because there's a little nerve that connects with the diaphragm on both sides, and that nerve is called the phrenic nerve, and if there's pressure on the diaphragm, it could refer up to your neck on the right side. So it can cause headaches on the right side, it can create any problem with your right, your trap muscle over here, and even the muscles around your neck, which could even cause a spasm to pull the vertebra out of alignment and pinch the nerve and cause pain on the right side. I've seen that many times. What's interesting is you make a lot of bile every day. Well, you're supposed to anyway. You make between 27 and 34 ounces every single day. That's 400 to 800 milliliters for those people in Europe. Um, we're still not at the metric system in the US, um, but we try to be. Now the color of bile is a yellowish brown, sometimes kind of an olive green. Now another interesting thing about this bile is that it takes cholesterol to make bile. It takes a lot. Every day, it takes 500 milligrams of cholesterol to actually make bile. And one of the purposes of bile, in addition to extracting the fat soluble vitamins from the food that you eat, is to also eliminate excess amount of cholesterol. So if you have high cholesterol, for example, one of the reasons could be you don't have enough bile. Now, if there's liver damage, okay, if you have a fatty liver or you have uh, hepatitis or cirrhosis of the liver, that's scar tissue, that alone could decrease the production of bile. But the big question is, what causes these little stones that can then lodge and cause this gallbladder attack, right? Well, the gallstone is mostly made of cholesterol, okay? It's a super concentrated cholesterol stone. Now, based on that information, you might think, oh my gosh, I better stop eating cholesterol foods, right? Because I don't wanna get a stone. But remember, it actually takes cholesterol to make bile, and also our bodies make 75% of all the cholesterol. In other words, only 25% comes from your diet. So our body makes a lot. We need it to make hormones, to support the uh, nervous system, to support the immune system, to support the lining, the membrane around all the cells. So cholesterol is a good thing. A super saturated amount of cholesterol is a bad thing. Now, the problem is if you go on a extreme low fat diet, your risk for getting gallstones go up. Okay, now that's weird, how can that be? Because one of the triggers for the release of bile is 
saturated fats. Okay, so if you cut out fats, you dry up this bile reserve that you have. It's the lack of bile that forms this super concentrated cholesterol stone. So it's not the cholesterol, it's the lack of bile. If you have enough bile and you have a lot of cholesterol, you don't have any problems, okay? It's when you don't have enough bile to be able to keep the cholesterol thinned, so to speak, and not develop in the stones, that's where the problem is. So of course, the next question is, how do we maintain this bile? How do we make sure we have enough? And what causes a deficiency of bile? Because if you research gallstones, one of the treatments is taking bile salts, okay, to help dissolve the stones. So that's interesting. But there are three main causes of gallstones. There's other causes, but there's three main ones. One is this, if you have too much insulin, okay, because you have a high carbohydrate diet, or you're diabetic, or you're pre-diabetic, or you have insulin resistance, that right there can deplete your bile reserve, okay, causing stones. Because if you look at diabetics, uh, they have a higher risk of getting gallstones. So that's why. Um, next one is increasing cortisol. So if you're on a medication called prednisone, which is an anti-inflammatory, or you're under massive stress, that can also shut down the bile production as well, causing a stone. And lastly, increase estrogen. And this explains why women who are pregnant have a higher risk of getting a stone because the spike in estrogen. It also explains the side effect from birth control pills, which is increased risk of bile salts, as well as hormone replacement therapy. So I think it's really important to understand all these factors because by knowing this, first of all, you can know if potentially you have a stone. Number two, you can do things to prevent a stone. And it also tells us if we have a deficiency of either a fat-soluble vitamin or some omega-3 fatty acid, and we can look at this being one of the major causes because maybe we just don't have enough bile and we need to actually take a little more bile. Also, the microbes in your gut are very, very important in the recycling of bile. In fact, 95% of all the bile uh, in your body gets recycled by the microbes. So if you've been on antibiotics or you have certain uh, digestive issues, it could be that you just need to increase your flora of good bacteria to help recycle this bile. Now let's say, for example, you don't have a stone, but you still have gallbladder symptoms. It could be the gallbladder is sluggish because maybe the bile is too thick, not necessarily enough to create a stone, but let's say that could be one situation. Well, if you don't have enough bile, this will get thicker and it can create a lot of issues with the gallbladder and actually create some congestion, some swelling, some pain, even though there's not a stone. And because bile salts act as a lubricant, you can get constipation as one of the big side effects. Also, you'll get bloating, belching, and burping. So you can see this bile is just so important. All right, a couple last points. Okay, so because if I don't answer these, some people are gonna say, well, what about this? Or what about that? If you have the gallbladder removed, okay, what happens is you're still getting some bile being produced and it's trickling down, but not to the same quantity. In that case, you may benefit by taking some purified bile salts. Okay, so that's number one. If you have your gallbladder out and you have diarrhea, it, there's a condition which happens when you remove the gallbladder that you get actually too much bile coming out, in which case you don't want to take more bile salts because bile salts will actually create more lubrication and if you already have diarrhea, you'll have more diarrhea. Uh, but one indication for bile salts is constipation or sluggishness in the elimination of waste. So if you want some more information about bile salts in general, I put a link down below. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.